Everybody, welcome to Impact Theory. You are here, my friends, because you believe that human potential is nearly limitless. But you know that having potential is not the same as actually doing something with it. So our goal with this show and company is to introduce you to the people and ideas that will help you actually execute on your dreams. All right, today's guest is a college dropout that everyone thought was going to fail. But against the odds, he turned himself into a self-made multimillionaire by the time he was 24. Starting from humble beginnings, he learned fast and built an empire through an unending amount of grit and hustle. What he lacked in formal training, he made up for in street savvy and an understanding of people. He created a huge online community around stock trading, made some heroic stock investments himself, was up $20 million just from investing, and simultaneously also built his own marketing agency into a monster that was doing $10 million in annual revenue. He had the penthouse in the sky, the Bentleys, the Ferraris, he was traveling the world in style, and then, out of nowhere, it all came crashing down. When the Great Recession hit, he lost it all, everything. But he did not sit in a corner and cry about it. He checked his ego, put his head down, and shifted back into raw hustle mode. But this time, it wasn't about ego or the money, it was about impact. And from the ashes, he and two co-founders, in the grips of the recession, began building a new media company for millennials called Elite Daily. They were committed to giving voice to a generation that up to that point really didn't have one. And despite a mountain of hate being thrown their way by traditional media companies, they built an amazing company and culture, outworked everyone else, and established themselves as the dominant player in their demographic, building a massive brand that reached over 80 million readers per month. In 2015, they were acquired for nearly $50 million by the Daily Mail. But what makes today's guest so fascinating, it isn't how successful he's been. It's that instead of retiring to Miami Beach, he decided the only thing that mattered to him was building something to help those less fortunate. So he moved into one of the worst neighborhoods in Newark, New Jersey, began buying the surrounding area and created Founders, a social impact accelerator for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. So please. Help me in welcoming one of the most passionate and fascinating human beings I have ever met. The CEO of Founders, an angel investor and philanthropist who is helping underprivileged entrepreneurs become successful entrepreneurs. The man known as the millennial mentor, Gerard Adams. That was the best intro I think I've ever, I definitely ever had. My friend, That's it awesome. doesn't even come close to capturing what it felt like to meet you in Newark, to go out, to see the space, meet the people that you're actually helping, who by the way have come from all over the world, yeah. to be part of what you're doing in a really run down part of the city. But when you see what you guys are doing, it, it was unbelievable. And I'm so glad I got to see it for myself. So my question is, you're rich, homie. Why do you work so hard? Like, what, what is that about? Uh, for me, I mean, um, I do what I love every single day. You know, I really do. I, I really enjoy seeing the people around me thrive and succeed. And I love passing down the knowledge that, you know, I've learned over the past 14 years. It was, it was tough, you know, to, to amount to some success in my life. And... For me, I started just asking myself tough questions of like, why, you know, why did this all happen? You know, how did I overcome all of this? And like, what can I do every day to, to truly inspire and educate and impact the people around me and do it in a place where my family's roots are from and, you know, in a community that, you know, really is important to me. And, and if I can do it, you know, every single day there, little by little, make that impact there, hopefully we can spread that across the world. All right, so walk us through a little bit of the story. So when you're, you're riding high at 24, you've got to feel pretty badass. I know I certainly would have. Um, what did your mom say when you lost everything that really put your head on right? <sighs> oh, man, that was, um, that was crazy. It's, it's interesting. You know, when, when that all happened, I was so scared to, like, be vulnerable and, like, that I, like, lost. You know, like, I... I really understood at that point like that about like about ego and you know I 
when that all happened, I couldn't tell anybody. I was like scared. You know, what they would think. Yeah, because like I was this person that like overcame adversity, made it. Like all my friends are just starting to graduate from college. They couldn't get a job. They were coming to me to for, for to get a job. Right. You know, um, and I had lost it all. And I was like, oh my God, like what do I do? Like I can't, I don't want to tell people I lost it all. Right. Like I, you know, and I didn't know what to do. And then at the, at the end of the day, um, my mother just told me that when she was 15 years old, she had a studio apartment with her brothers and sisters, my aunt and uncles and my grandparents. She was walking home from school with her friend and her friend was like, Jenny, I think the building that you live in is on fire. And my mother ran home and luckily my family got out, but they lost everything but the shirts on their back. And my mother had never told me about this growing up. Whoa. So like I never knew any of this. It was until like I actually was down and out that my mother sat me down and I was like, I don't know what to do, mom. How am I gonna like get out of this? And she was the kid of immigrant parents, right? Yeah. Both was my, she actually both born my in Colombia? She was born in Colombia. Okay. okay. Yeah. And well, how old parents, was she when she came? I think about six years old. Okay, wow. Yeah. And um she told me she was like she had to beg her school teacher to uh, allow her to take night classes so that she can get a job. They didn't want her, allow her, but she like basically begged. And they let her take night classes and she couldn't get a job in Jersey. So she went to Canal Street. It was like winter time. And my mom's telling me this and starts crying. And wow. she's just like, when I went through that, just so I can get make a little bit of money to help your grandparents put a food on the table. And I was the oldest sibling of all your aunts and uncles. And we were able to overcome that. And now I put this roof over your head. You best believe that you better get out there and you can do it again. Because you can lose everything, Gerard, but they can't take this away, they can't take this away from you. And that's why I feel so blessed to have such great parents. Um, because they, they these are the things that like they instilled in me. Like those are the values, the the mindset. Both my parents throughout my entire life have really I I owe it all to them. Um, not for like what they've you know, anything material, anything like that. I'm so grateful for all the, the things they've done for me, but more than anything, just like they've always empowered me and they always just like really um, supported me and just seeing what they've done to, to get to where they are and, and my grandparents too, like immigrating. I always, you know, I owe it to them. Mm. You used to get in at least one fist fight with your dad if I'm not mistaken, growing up. <laughs> Sounds like you were a bit of a handful. I was. You know, I wasn't the, um, I wasn't like the book smart, do good in school kid. I was the troublemaker. You know, I, from like a young age, I just, you know, was the more social and I liked, the, I was a skater. I went through so many phases. I was like a skater, then I got into hip hop phase. I was like all like wearing like FUBU, South <laughs> Paul. Like, and then I went to the BMX and I went through so many different phases as a kid. Um, and I like was a hu young hustler. And you know, I, I almost got into some big trouble. I haven't really publicly talked about this too much. I've always kind of like been scared, but um, I went from like street racing, selling car parts, and then somehow I ended up getting caught into selling weed and like all my friends were smoking and stuff like that. I was like young 17 and I ended up getting caught into freaking hustling like 20 bags of like weed wow. when I was like young. And I'll never forget um, my f family, like my father one day seeing me in my room at 17 years old and seeing me put the weed in the bag and my dad is old school. So like growing up, my dad didn't take no shit. I mean, he really like didn't take no shit. Right. This is the first time in my life he just looked at me and was like, I'm really disappointed. And this is your decision, but don't come, don't come home when you get in trouble. Wow. And something crazy happened. I thought I was like invincible or something. Literally like the next day, I'm driving my car. I'm going to like drop off a 20 to like my, at my friend's house. And all of a sudden, all these cops surround me. Woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, oh my God. And I had tinted windows. I'm like hiding it, like had an eclipse. You should be, be able to like hide by the transmission. And all of a sudden, all these cops are surround me. And I'm like, my whole life flashed before my eyes. I'm like, I, I just ruined my life. My family, Whoa. This, everyone that, that like in school thought I was gonna be like this kid, I wasn't gonna make it. All these, I'm like, I just proved them right. Like what is, I can't believe I did this. And then lo and behold, these cops all pounded my window. 
lower the window. Da, da, da. And I'm like, hand it straight, I lower the window. I look at the officer, what are you doing? And like, I'm like, I'm picking up my friend from high school and I had just had called him right before the cops banged on the window. He comes out, hey, it's just, you know, Gerard picking me up from school. And lo and behold, somebody was committing Grand Theft Auto right in front of me. Uh -oh. and that's why the cops came. And they arrested this person for Grand Theft Auto right in front of me. And I was at that moment, I was like, oh my God. Like, I felt like I had a, first of all, a guardian angel, my grandmother right. who passed away from cancer. He's like always been my guardian angel. And I would just, but I, I was just like, whoa, like, I, this is not what I'm supposed to, this is my, you know, I need to really think about, think twice about my life and my path. And that's when I was like, all right, I need to channel everything about my ambition and like who I am as a person and my, you know, how I was raised. Like, I need to channel that into business. From that moment forward, I like completely switch gears. I wanted to go into, you know, really focus on getting into a good college at that time. Yeah, I haven't really talked about that, but you know, it's like, you know, when you, 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 you're succumbed to your environment and I was surrounded by an environment where all my friends were smoking, you know, doing drugs, right. gangs, fights, street racing. Um, and I was just like succumbed to that and it became the norm for me. Um, How'd you get out of it so fast though? Like, I mean, you started really taking yourself seriously Certainly right after you drop out of college, which uh, you can't be more than 18, 19 at that point. Yeah, I was 18 years old. So what, was it that incident that caused you to really buckle down and get serious or? Yeah, definitely, As from, a, from like a, a mindset, definitely. And then I went to go to college, cause like, okay, my parents are saying, in order for me to become successful, like, I gotta go to college, right. get a good education. You know, I wasn't able to get into Princeton like my dad wanted, so I got into Caldwell College. And my, my goal was to eventually transfer. And within to my Princeton? Hopefully. Right. And my first semester, I was like, yo, everyone is partying more than freaking high school here. Right. And they're telling me what classes to take in order to earn credits just to get to the classes I want to take to learn about business while getting into debt. And I was like, this is the biggest business in the world. I'm like, it's education. They're, they're, you know, this is a, like, in my opinion, I was like, this is like a scam. You know, we have the internet. Like, I'm, you know, <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to, I want to double down on the internet. And um, luckily I found a mentor pretty early on at that time at 18 years old. Mm. And um, having that conversation with my family was really tough. That you were dropping out? Yeah. Because again, it's like, oh, you know, is he going to be- Here we go. Here we go. You know, is he- get, he's, is... Now, did they think you were just being lazy? No. They saw my- they saw me like, you know, up to four or five in the morning every night mm. on that computer. They saw me educating. Working on a business plan? or Yeah, working on a business plan, working on a website, working, going on to different forums. Right. They were like, were you already thinking stock spot at this point? I was thinking stocks, yeah. Okay. And, and I was starting to ideate the, the, the stock spot. Right. Because I was going on all these other forums to learn about stocks, to learn about like, you know, investing and trading. And none of them had a rating system. None of them, you didn't know who was who. It was like the AOL, almost like AOL, like back in the day when they had right. chat rooms and it's just like screen names, you know, you don't know who's yeah. who. So I was like, man, there's gotta be something out there. And if there isn't, I should create it. And that's been like, you know, that's, that's the way I've continued to be an entrepreneur to this day. That's where your business ideas come from? Yeah. Scratch yeah. that own edge? Yeah. So it's really interesting. So at Quest, I, because we were manufacturing in the inner cities, um, I worked with a lot of former drug dealers. And it is utterly fascinating what an amazing education that is in entrepreneurship. Like just let go of any moral judgment for a sec. Like the product is essentially risk. That's what you're really selling. Like you're willing to tolerate the risk. And so you get a hold of this thing that's illegal that makes you have heart attacks when police are nearby. Um, and that's essentially what you broker for people is I'll take this risk to get you this thing. Um, but because it's so high risk and because when you're really serious about it, there are people that actually will try to come and kill you and take your stash and whatever you're encroaching on their turf. I mean, it obviously can be incredibly, incredibly violent, but they also know like the cops and how they change shifts and who has what car and so that they can really like keep an eye on everything. And I was talking to one of them. I wasn't that, uh, I wasn't that Yeah, good. <laughs> right. You're sort of a little earlier stage, but talking to some of these guys that had like legitimate businesses that were passed down, right? So they weren't just like your random street hustler. These were people that like their parents were in the drug wow. trade. And so it was a family business. And you know, for whatever reason, you end up having to take it over. And I remember one day just like, I really want to understand this because it, 
Like this guy was really, really sharp. No matter what you put him on, like he would just get it. He'd be able to do it. He was good with people. Like he understood like what are the business objectives and how is what I'm doing like apply to that and how do I have to get people to work for me to make it work? It's really pretty interesting. Like did you feel entrepreneurial while you were doing it? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, the risk every single day. Um, you know, you start to make money that you never seen, you know, I've never had money like that. And so for me, it was like the taste of like, wow, okay, I'm, I'm able to. And what did it feel like? Is that like freedom for you or? or yeah, it- definitely some freedom. Um, freedom to start being able to kind of do what I want, like kind of control like what I wanted right. and do certain things. Um, and what, what is the like value of risk for an entrepreneur? Like the, the ability to take risk? It's everything. It's part of my DNA, you know? Um, It's just like I'm constantly every day trying to challenge myself, you know, to push myself to take risk, whether it's in my personal life, you know, pushing myself to new environments, trying new things. And why do you do that? It helps me grow, you know? I grow as an individual. Every time I try to do something that scares me, I just like... And afterwards, like I just it empowers me. I feel, you know, I feel like I've learned something. I've grown. I've learned about a new culture. I've learned about a new person. I always feel like I can learn something new from someone, no matter who they are, you know. So, um, and then with ideas, like I, you know, I just love. I'm not afraid to fail. You know, for me, there's nothing more powerful than creating something. And if it's going wrong, like solving. Okay, how, let's pivot. Let's ch- figure out why it's not working and continuing until you know, we actually have built something that people, you know, see value in mm-hmm. and has grown. And uh, when something does work, the reward of like seeing people come together for one thing and everyone kind of believing in that mission and believing in that idea and believing in it, it's just like, there's nothing more rewarding. To me, that's like, uh, it's, it's, a, it's best moments of my life have been like when I've taken a big risk and I've seen it come to fruition and like, it's gone from this idea to people, to like actual people, f- like, you know, all be- making it reality, mm. something tangible, seeing the emotion that it creates in different people. And, and like, the, it's just awesome, you know? And then, the, I don't know, I forget, I think it puts me to like the Elite Daily, like the moment where me and my co founders, when we had that exit and we didn't plan it and we looked each other in the eye and we're like, man, like, we fucking did it. Like, forget about the money. Like, there's 200 people back in the office that are all happy, freaking working on a common goal, mm-hmm. 80 million people that are reading this thing on a daily basis. Like, remember the days when it was just three folding chairs and we didn't know if this thing was gonna really work? And now, you know, it's, it was, to me, that's like, it was the greatest thing in the world. All right, so rewind me back. You're 18, 19, yeah. you get out of the drug trade very wisely. Uh, and you drop out of college. That seems like at that point probably the biggest risk that you took, from, certainly from the perspective of everyone now thinks I'm exactly what they told me I was going to be, right? I am the failure, I am the dropout, and uh, I didn't get into Princeton the way that my dad wanted, which I'm assuming he'd been beating into you for a very long time. So what was it that gave you the courage to quit? How did you convince yourself that you were actually the right person to bet on, that you would be better at educating yourself than the education system? You know, for me, it was like, what I was passionate about was like learning how to invest, what made companies successful, understanding how to read an income statement, understanding how to read that balance statement, understanding what made this And you just started thrive. looking that up. How do you read a balance Oh yeah, statement? I started just re- going on all over the internet. Um, I would read like Silicon Investor, um, Raging Bull, you know, yeah, finance.yahoo.com. Like these are the sites that I would go to and just s- start to, you know, read and c- connect with different people on those message boards. And if I had asked you at that point, what do you do? Like you dropped out of school, Gerard, but what do you do? Like you're on the computer all day, but what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm learning, I'm starting to learn how to uh, trade. I'm starting to, you know, research companies, understand, you know, their fundamentals, uh, you know. um, And did you get good at it? Oh, great at it. So how'd you get the technology built? Like, I'm putting myself 
back in the time where the internet is, isn't exactly new, but it's certainly not robust in the way that we think about it today. You're 18, 19 at this point. The first hurdle for virtually everybody is, A, I know nothing about stocks. I don't know how to read a balance sheet. So when you dive into stocks and you realize the first thing you have to learn is about balance sheets, you stop because it's like, Jesus, this is such a world unto itself. But then even if I get over that, then when I realize that, wait, Forum is a technology, somebody has to build me the technology. I don't know anybody that builds these things. Like, how did you keep hitting these roadblock after roadblock after roadblock and go, there's a solution here and I'm gonna find it. Yeah. How'd you do that? Uh, I mean, just young hustler. I mean, like, I, are you a born entrepreneur? Do you identify as a born entrepreneur? I didn't call myself that, but yeah, I would say that since I was a kid, from like hustling lollipops as a kid, to then t shirts, Mark Echo t shirts, to like, it just. How are you selling Mark Echo t shirts? Uh, one of my friend's fathers worked for Mark Echo. You know, he had all the shirts, like, and I would basically get them from him, like, from the father wholesale and wear them to school and then sell them. That's amazing. Okay, so like the very advanced lemonade stand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and like I, I was taught to work, you know? Like I worked at the supermarket, the A&P growing up where my mom worked. Yeah, tell me about your mom and dad's work ethic. Oh my gosh, my mom worked seven days a week, you know, almost every week. Um, at a local supermarket. And is she telling you like, this is what you have to do, like you do whatever it takes to make ends meet? Or was she like, fuck the man, this sucks, I can't believe I have to do this? No, my mom loved it. I mean, you know, um, you know, she was a bookkeeper and she just like, you know, she took pride in it. She dressed every day, like, you know, it was inspiring for me as a kid to see her do that every single day. Um, and my father worked for Prudential. Um, you know, and just saw him every single day and he, I would watch him as a kid doing the budget in the living room and like watch him as like, you know, um, you know, working and providing for the family. And he used to leave notes for me throughout the house of little quotes from different leaders. As a kid, be like, ah, here's another, you know, I didn't really get it. Right. Um, but looking back, like he was definitely subconsciously building me into a leader for sure. And what does that mean? Like, what are the qualities of a great leader for you? Um, courage, someone who has, is, 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 has, the, has the courage no matter what to um, believe in something, hold heartily and follow that with faith and courage to just go and, and no matter what, we'll be able to also, um, I think for me, leading is picking up the people around me and putting them before myself. Um, caring about everybody around me and, and putting them in a position to thrive and to succeed before myself and basically leading by example um, of how you live your life. Leadership to me is, a, is character, you know, who you are, not what you do. And when did that come about in you? Did you always have that or was some of that from gaining things so quickly only to lose them and realize, wait, this was largely a problem of ego? I, the ego was one of the biggest lessons for me um, in my life because, you know, as a, as a young guy, when I started to finally, it started to work and I started to make some money, like, you can really easily, and I see it even today, day and age, like, you can get caught up in, like, caring about, like, making the money. And, you know, for me, I lost touch with, you know, who I was and, like, the fact that, yeah, I aspired to have all these nice things and it was great, but what is it all for? And I didn't think about legacy. You know, I'm just a young guy. Like, I want to get back to my parents. I want to pay off their mortgage. I want to, you know, I want to be able to buy my sister. One of my greatest moments in life were, was when my sister thought I wasn't going to show up to her 17th birthday because I was out hustling. And I surprised her and my parents couldn't afford her first car. And I surprised her in the driveway with the car that she always dreamed of. Whoa. With a poster board that says, happy birthday, sis, I love you and putting a bow on it and seeing her break down, crying, hysterical, and like picking her up and spinning her. And, and then her saying like, I didn't even know you loved me this much. That's what she was, wow. you know, and like, for me, the, you know, that was like what I strive for um, were moments like that. And then also like being able to get all these things and being able to go into the store and I'm a sneaker head like you. And <laughs> I just remember going into the store and being like, I want every dunk, like Nike dunks. Like give me every color. And you know, I was having fun and living, but um, I wasn't thinking about impact. I wasn't thinking about right. legacy. I was thinking about like, 
how can I make more money, more money, more money? So that's got to make it even harder than when it all starts falling apart. How did you handle all that? Obviously, mom sort of ultimately gives you the clinching piece of information. Um, but how do you how do you get back on your feet? Um, I love pressure. I love adversity. I actually like. Th- I'm actually. I perform better with pressure really? and adversity, for sure. I wasn't the kid who like was able to like study for like the test. Mm. But when it came time to take that test, like I'm like I, I get really focused and prepared for this. It's the same thing with speaking engagements now. You know, like I'm really bad at like preparing from a TEDx. Like people prepare for like months. Like my TEDx, I didn't prepare. <laughs> I waited. It was like the day of like <laughs> TEDx, and I was like, wow. You know, all right, it's game time. Like get focused, and what are the, what is it that we want to accomplish here? What is the message? Um, that was great because my mother. That was the first time my mother showed up. I dedicated it to my mom. But I always thrived uh, over adversity, and uh, when it, and what are you saying to yourself at this point? Like, how do you leverage the pressure? Is it just literally subconscious and you show up? Or are you saying like, hey, there's pressure, there's people that want to see me fail, there's no way I'm going to let this happen? Yeah, um, it's definitely subconscious. Um, Just throughout my entire life, I've had moments like that where I've almost even died, you know, like scuba diving, almost drowning, and like my air breaking, and me me being like, fuck, I'm underwater right now, I don't have air, I may die, what's going to happen? And then like, lo and behold, like somehow, like the person next to me like sees that I'm choking and like, boom, gives me their air. And I'm like, okay, and get to the top. Whoa. Or like when I'm snowboarding backcountry and you know, my friends all lose me and it gets dark and I'm in the middle of the mountain and like, I have no helmet. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta get to the bottom of this mountain. And there's rocks and trees. And I'm like, okay, put yourself together. This is adversity at its finest. Like you gotta get down this fucking mountain, you know? And like. Throughout my life, I've had moments like this happen, and it's just like over time, I f- see that fear, and I'm like, I'm running right through it. You know, there's nothing that's gonna hold me. Just times I'm flying in the plane, I'm like, this plane may go down, but you know, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with dying. Like that's because now it's like I'm doing. I know I'm doing everything I possibly can every single day to inspire, and impact the people around me, and if I die, I know that I've done my part as much as I possibly can. And was that part of the driving desire to get back up on your feet and do yeah, something? Yeah, that's a, that's the driving force of like every day, like pushing myself. And um, that's when I was like, I want to step up as a as more as a more as a role model for this generation and be a better leader. Um, I started looking on social media and seeing a lot of people portraying success and creating this perception of success. Um, and there, I felt that there was something missing out there for millennials as, you know, they're growing up people that were being vulnerable and talking about the, the grit, talking about the adversity, talking about the failing, you know, and also, also talking about like the, some, the real path to success and what it takes, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and um, I just, I wanted to be able to, to start to speak up and share that and share that story and, and get out there and me- do more of what I love. But I realized is that I love mentoring, you know, with Elite Daily, my CEO was 19 years old. He was my intern. Wow. For me, like, I want to see the people around me succeed more than I've succeeded. So walk me through the moment. You go see Tony Robbins, you start thinking about what that next move is going to be. You're legitimately contemplating. When I said that you could have retired to Miami, that wasn't a throwaway line. Like you were actually- Well, my accountant told me to just not retire, but go to Miami for the save on the state income tax. And like, you're getting getting ready to get these big wires, go to Miami. Um, And I was this close. I had this like freaking beautiful place in the sky, ocean views. And um, it was like getting ready to sign. And I just had a moment like on the balcony looking at that ocean and was just like, nah, this isn't where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm, I don't deserve this yet right now. I have, more, I have more work to do. And, like, and uh, I, going back to Newark where my family was from and seeing kind of what was happening there and then like being asked to speak at, in Silicon Valley and seeing these ecosystems being built to support entrepreneurs and give resources, but you didn't see that where, you know, where I grew up. So I wanted to, I was like, that's what I need to be doing. I need to be back there. I need to be building that. And um, that was it, you know? So much of, uh, of the youth there, I can see like 
they're getting succumbed to the environment that I got succumbed to growing up. And they're talking to me about hustling now. And mm. they're talking about like, yo, that's the only way we know. Otherwise I'm supposed to, my teacher's telling me I'm supposed to go get a job at McDonald's, you know? And I'm like, nah, let me tell you, how, let me tell you, if I was able to do it, you can too, you know? And you, but you need to start making that choice. You need to make that choice right now for yourself. Dude, going to Founders was amazing. The energy there was unlike anything I've ever seen. I was so glad that we had a camera with me. Yeah. Because, so <clears throat> to give you guys a little bit of a setup, I was in New York for something else. You hit me up on social. We had met at South by Southwest. You hit me up on yeah. social, said, dude, if you're like in Manhattan, you gotta come to New York. You've gotta see what we're doing. And you had told me about it. I, I literally couldn't believe that it was real. But I was so caught by that notion of you in the penthouse in Miami, I know that view, you're looking out at the water, you're about to sign and you don't. Like, I am still freaked out by that. You don't sign, you go back, you don't just go back to New Jersey, you go back to like a gnarly part of New Jersey. And, <laughs> and literally, I'm thinking, I've really gotta see this for myself. Somebody that is so connected to these kids and so wants to like give back, because I'm thinking, I know what the kind of money you've made can do. Like it, that doesn't change your life a little, that changes your life a lot. And in this really beautiful way, it moved you backwards, in a beautiful way. But it moved you backwards. You went from, I'm sure, a much nicer neighborhood to spending all of your time in a really downtrodden area, but you like so smart, get a, a real estate partner to help you come in, you buy the stuff, it's live, work, play. Yep. You're bringing, uh, you're revitalizing the neighborhoods, the art gallery that you and I shot yep. in, you've got the food there to really draw people in. And then when I came in, I was supposed, I was just supposed to be doing a talk for Rutgers, which right. ironically I had no idea was down the street, by the way. Yeah. So I set up a computer so we can do a Skype, and I'm like, hey, if you've got kids there, like let them listen. And the fucking kids were on fire, man. Yeah. Like their energy was through the roof. They all had like these really good business ideas. Like the kid that gave me a bag full of like crickets and <laughs> yeah. it was like branded. It's like Jiminy's or something. Yep. I want to give a mad shout out. Jiminy's. Yep. Like I was like, what is going on in this like hilariously random corner of Newark, New Jersey? <laughs> so what is the magic, man? Like you've captured something. You've done something to these kids. So it's about community, um, first and foremost, uh, both building the community within Fountainers for people to be a part of it, um, but also, you know, we're a social enterprise, so getting back and revitalizing these parts of the city. And, you know, what we are is a progressive education company, um, to, you know, teaching through the principles of entrepreneurship and just our... It's similar to like a general assembly, you know, we are, it's basically our different curriculums. And these are, these are curriculums that are based upon all the things that I've learned over the past 14 years that I wish I learned if I were to go back to school back when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is the, you know, this is what I would have wanted to learn, you know, in a, in a high intense boot camp style, 12 weeks through personal growth, personal development, emotional intelligence, financial literacy, then into like business model canvas, understanding how to really launch an idea, test, experiment, market, story tell. How do you be able to tell your story? How do you be able to get customers? How do you be able to do all of that? And, and basically bringing in mentors. So, you know, I fostered relationships, you know, like, I'm so grateful for our relationship, but the, the impact that you made, like they never would have been able to ever meet you and have you in a room. And the fact that now we're able to bring in these type of experts into that space to be able to share their stories, share their lessons. Do you, do you even, the impact that you made that day was so like deep and long lasting. You changed some lives that day. And that happens every single day. Every day we're teaching them, we're meditating in the morning, we're working with them, Tai Chi, physical, working with them on their mental, their physical. And then, you know, and then we're bringing in these mentors and experts to share and, and really get them to level up and understand what it really means to be an entrepreneur. Because a lot of people throw this title nowadays of being an entrepreneur, but it's like, you know, building a real business is, you know, is, is not this glorified thing. It's fucking very difficult. And you really need to understand how to um, 
how to be able to overcome all those challenges, test, experiment, fail, 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 <laughs> fail, you know, until you, figure, until you get it right. And, um, and that's basically what we, and that's what we're, that's like our secret sauce, you know, is, is, is giving that education and teaching that over these 12 weeks with some of the best lead, leaders in the world. How do you teach them to, so I've heard it defined and I forget by who, but success is the ability to go from failure to failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. How do you teach them how to do that, which is so important? Teach them how to f figure out their, their, you know, their why, man. It it's really comes down to that. But you know, that's the truth. It's figuring out what really, why are they doing it and what really truly drives them to, to, to br solve this problem. And do you try to help them look past the money? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely it's definitely tough for them. And the entrepreneurs have the, definitely have their lows, and the, um, a lot of, some of them don't make it. You know, some of them break, and they like ah, this isn't for me. And that, that's a great question. Can anybody become an entrepreneur? Can anyone become a great entrepreneur? Yes. But do they do they have what it takes? Are they willing to do whatever it takes? Mm. Um, a lot of people give up and that's just the, the, you know, that's just the truth. Can you tell who's going to make it and who won't? Um, usually, yeah, usually. I mean, the first four weeks I'm breaking them. I'm not there to be their friend. I'm there to be their mentor and I'm breaking them down to figure out, do you really, really want this? And how do you do that? Because this, like, understand this is such an important question for me. So we have an internship program here and for anybody interested, lean in a little closer and I want you to hear, this is my criteria. I just wanna know if you can work. I have no fucking idea how to tell ahead of time. Like you can look at somebody, maybe they're really bright, maybe they've got something special, but will they do whatever it takes? Are they gonna grind? I have no idea, like literally, Gerard, I've interviewed a lot of people. Yeah. I'm talking 1,500, <laughs> probably more yeah. people in every like stratosphere you can imagine. So I've interviewed people that are fresh out of prison and they want to be a janitor. And I've interviewed people up to the EVP of sales. And you know, these are people that have worked for Fortune 500 companies and, um, and everyone in between. I can't tell you how to determine if somebody has drive. People can tell you, grit, right, is another way to say it. People will tell you that they have ambition. They're all gonna tell you that, right? right? Um, they're all gonna tell you that they really want it. They're all gonna tell you that they're compassionate and that they're caring and that they wanna see other people succeed. But whether or not, like how they react when it sucks yeah. is, is a whole nother beast, right? Oh yeah. Like who can deal with self-imposed suffering? <sighs> That's really the question. And to your point, like, What's your why? Have you read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> Gerard, A, you must right. read that book, and B, seriously, I will, I will, in fact, right now I'm telling you, I'm yeah. gonna ship you like 100 of those fucking books. Any kid that walks through your doors okay. needs to read that. Viktor Frankl survived, he actually survived five, I believe, concentration camps. Wow. Five, including Auschwitz. And he said, literally, you would know 72 hours before someone was gonna die because they would give up. And he said, once they gave up, you, you can't survive that kind of hardship if you don't yes. have something in you that is so important to you, yes. that is pushing you and driving you forward. He said, the moment they lost their why, they were done. Yeah, 100%. And there's that awesome Nietzsche quote, if you have a why, you can survive almost any how. Yes. So, when you hear this, and he's a neurologist, so this guy is just like bright in the extreme, very educated and very articulate about psychology and the brain and what's happening neurologically to these people. But what I found so unendingly interesting is you can never predict who the people were that were gonna break. Once they broke, it was so evident and so immediately obvious. They're like, okay, they're, they're done now. Like they, they no longer know why they're suffering, right? And when you were like, I'm suffering because I'm gonna go find my kids or I'm gonna go find my spouse and I'm gonna build something back up. Or even if, this is the fucking interesting part, even if your why was I'm going to fucking kill every one of these guards, the second this war is over, my friend, I will know nothing but bloodshed. Great, like at least that, like gave you something to keep, <laughs> truly, right? And I've got a whole thing about beauty and rage, both can serve you. And let me assure you, in a concentration camp, I'm gonna lean a little more on the rage yeah. than anything else. But having your why, like understanding yeah. that, so 
I need to understand what you do to like put these kids to the test to figure out who really wants it. Because I want this to work more than you can imagine. And I know you're not, a, you don't play being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I know you're actually trying to solve a problem. Yeah. So what is it? Tell me, cause I want to put it to use in my own life. I don't, I, I just really put, try to see if they'll break by me questioning the fact that like, well, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is going to really work. And I think you should maybe go in a different direction and seeing like, is it, they, they really, really at the end of the day, no matter what, say to me, Gerard, one way or another, however, it, however it's going to have to happen, like I am pushing this thing forward and going to make this a reality. Um, and like once I feel that and see them actually put that into action, that's when I know they have whatever, it, they'll do whatever it takes and they have it. Um, but for me, it's just constantly trying to question them and see if, you know, if they'll break. I love that. I love that so much. All right, so what are like some key team building things that people should have? Um, well, first and foremost, it's understanding, uh, you know, it's really the self-awareness. So it's like for first and foremost with the founder, it's like, what are you really great at? Mm -hmm. Because as an entrepreneur, you typically want to do it all. And a lot of times in the very beginning, you are wearing every hat and trying to do it all. And you have to be resourceful. You have to be willing to get your hands dirty and do a little bit of everything in the beginning. But then it's like, okay, really buckle down. And I even had to go through this with myself. You know, there was times I was like trying to do too much, trying to do, trying to do it all. And like figure out like, what am I really really passionate about and what am I really great at? And what is that one thing that I can do the very best on my team to add the most value, you know, for the, you know, for this idea of business. And then so figuring out, okay, who do, we, who do you really need? You know, do you need that chief operating officer, that person that's gonna really help you with the operations and logistics and the infrastructure? Who do you need that, you know, mark, someone that's gonna handle your marketing that's just badass and all they care about is like how they're gonna be able to tell this story to the marketplace and be able to retain people that become customers and you know who are the people that you need you know around you and what are you really truly great at um is like the first the first thing that we really we, we teach and then it's um helping them understand what it like what it is they're building in a very concise way to get people to understand you know what it is that they're actually building, why they're building it. Um, and then basically getting out there, talking to people. It's like, you know, it's, it's at the end of the day, we teach them, you get out, go and talk to people, share this idea as many, you know, as much as you can, go out and network online, you know, uh, build relationships with people online and look for these people, put it out there, like actually leverage social media to talk about, document, we teach, you know, we're telling our entrepreneurs, document the process. You know, like is this that whole notion of social currency that mm -hmm. you talk about? Yeah, it's it's part of social currency. You know, like Explain you are a what social currency is. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like you're gonna die. Uh, so basically, we just you know we time delete daily right, uh, but I wouldn't do it again. Building a publication now, we are the publication. We are the media platform. So you know, at this point in time, like you need to be telling your story. You need to be taking your personal branding like serious. You know, and um, I, that's what we basically is teach is like, how are you branding yourself? How are you telling your story? How are you sh 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 sharing that story through your personal brand and also your, your business? And how's your, your business branding itself online? How are people perceiving you when they come across you? And because um, like I truly believe that if you, if you do that in the right way, the law of attraction, you're gonna start manifesting opportunities, your circle of influence, the people that you surround yourself with, it's gonna happen, it's happened with me. I never cared about my personal brand my entire career. It's, it's extremely important today that you understand how to share your story, how to document the process, how to put that out, how are people discovering you in today's day and age, consistently day in and day out. All right, I wanna bring it, I wanna wrap up the, the quality thing. So I derailed this a bit on how to build a team, but you said basically they have to be ride or die. They've really gotta know their why, uh, what you look for in entrepreneurs, and then they've gotta be good team builders, and then what are a couple other things you really look for in your all-star entrepreneurs? Uh, if there, I guess the ability to um, get get customers like test and be able to prove like it's just an idea until people right. actually are willing to pay for it they love it they're able to they're, they're or they're using your product consistently you know every day um 
So I want to see that the entrepreneur is willing to get out, talk to their customers, talk to the people that it be that this would bring value to, and see that they're able to get those people, those, you know, those customers or those um, that audience to be using their products day in and you know consistently. You know, something else that I'd like to see is just like their confidence overall, the fact that they're willing to be be out there, get out, be able to share their share their story um, and. Uh, get people to believe in them, you know, believe in their idea. And, you know, and then other than that, it's like just their grit, you know, being able to see that they're able to really, really uh, put, in the, put in the work to see it through. And do you think confidence is something you can teach? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of our entrepreneurs, when they come in, they don't have, they, that's something that they lack. They um, scared of what people will think of them, scared that people maybe steal their idea, they're going to get, they're going to fail. They, that's like, a big, um, a big thing in the, in the beginning of our accelerator that we try to teach. And how do you help people get over that? We do something called failing forward. So every Friday, we have them stand up in front of the room, in front of all the other entrepreneurs, and talk about an obstacle that they're facing, personally and professionally, and be open about that, and it teaches them to be a little more vulnerable and like wow. speak about that. And then the group, all of us, the mentors, the leaders, and the entrepreneurs, will help push them through that. And it's been transformational, that, that, that particular exercise um, where I've seen them, you know, come like week three of them like speaking in front of everybody, building relationships, like getting out there, um, feeling now that they have support, mm. all of a sudden you just start to see, I've seen them break down crying, like, wow. man, this is the first time I, I feel like, you know, people believe in me, like I actually have support, like I can do this, you know? And a lot of times that's what it is. You need to surround yourself with the right energy, the right people like that are, that are as passionate of you, like-minded people, that positivity and that energy is infectious. And that's like the environment that we'd create within founders. That's pretty incredible. Um, so the last thing that I want to talk about is specifically you're known as the millennial mentor. What, what is the unique struggle that you think millennials are going through that um, they need help with? I think uh, the, one of the things that I see that I've just recently been really talking about is the, the perception. Like we live in this day and age where like social media is so strong, right? You know, and it could do so many great things and connect. But like really digging into like what, why, you know, why are you here? Like what do you, like what do you want to give to the world? You know, and are you really discovering that within yourself because there's so much consumption happening on a daily basis because of social media and everything you can get so caught up on like living a script of what you think you should be doing rather than digging down inside yourself and shutting off all the noise and like figuring out like what is it that you you know what, what is it that you really want to do and what is it that you want to give to the world and uh, I think that millennials right now a lot of them you know haven't figured out who they really are and like because of the, and, 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 then, and then their fear, they fear, they fear how people are gonna judge them and what they look like and all that stuff instead of like really figuring out who they really are, not trying to be something that they're not and, and then starting living a true authentic life and putting that out, you know. Um, what does and, that process of self-discovery look like? How do you find out who you are? I think it's, um, for me, it was a lot changing my environment and it was, it, it was breaking the pattern of like what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis, look, changing my habits, changing my patterns, starting to go and travel, see new cultures, shut off the, you know, the phone, the noise and all that stuff. I started meditating. I started really thinking things through. I started reading more. I started, um, and, and my faith, I started praying more. Um, and that, that alone time, I started writing, I'm a writer. Um, so I love to write. I think that's one of the best things that you can do too, believe it or not, is just, you know, get your thoughts on paper, make them real, and just write. You don't need to know what you're gonna write. Just write your thoughts. Spend that time to yourself. You know, um, stop looking for so many opinions. And I think it, it takes, you know, you, you have to, you have to, that's a point really, um, you have to really do that. For me, that's what, I, that's what I do. No, for sure. Yeah. All right, so before I ask my final question, where can these guys find your amazing content? 
Oh, well, uh, it's, I mean, a shout out to the G Squad that's out here. We, 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 that's like the common denominator for me throughout my entire career has been content. I just love obviously sharing on a daily basis. Um, my number one platform right now is Instagram um, and YouTube. I have that show Leaders Create Leaders on YouTube. Tom is in season three. Yeah, it's buddy. about to be lit. Our episode was unbelievable. That just day when you came to Newark, you shared with the founders community. So many, everybody was like, that was the best speech that we've heard yet at Founders. Yeah. And, um, and in our episode, it went deep. I caught, I caught you on a couple of questions you've never been asked before, which was cool, brought back some memories. I, so the show Leaders Create Leaders, I would love to see you guys on YouTube. It's under Gerard Adams TV. Season three will be launching in July. Um, and then Founders, we're going to be opening up our online community come July as well. So I'm excited. That's that. exciting. Can you, do you have details on that? Like that could be amazing. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. You're going to make your courses available and stuff? Yeah, so a lot of live, so people can live stream, be able to get a lot of the live, you know, live instructors. Mm. I'll be, be doing a lot of more live mentorship. Um, a vault. I have so much content from ye 14 years of like my mentors and m I have my team just been been editing it for over a year now. Whoa. Yeah. So Jesus. it's like literally going to be like Netflix for entrepreneurs, like rows, like just like Netflix of just ev all these different categories of what we typically teach. All our members, we would invite them to our workshops and then we're going to start doing different experiences when we go on tour, where it'll be like three day weekends and really try to create some really cool travel experiences as well so we want all our members to be a part of all of that nice did you give your Instagram handle oh at Gerard Adams there you go follow the man everywhere everywhere all right final question what is the impact you want to have on the world basically does it matter where you come from you know you know what your background is um, it, that at the end of the day it it, if it's, it's that it's truly possible when you're able to truly f find who you are yourself, your authentic self, your why, your purpose, you know, and truly believe in yourself. And, you know, at the end of the day, anything is truly possible. And um, for me, the, the impact that I want to leave in a legacy is, you know, through changing the face of education, you know, through the principles of entrepreneurship. Um, and, you know, little, little, little by little every day, we're hoping that we can just be able to give hope give this the right skills, strategies, mindset uh, for the people that felt that they'd never had the resources, never be believed that in themselves and hopefully be able to have them bring to the world um, what they've always dreamt of. I love that. Gerard, thank you so much thank for coming you. on the show, brother. That was thank amazing. You. Guys, all right. I have seen the magic firsthand. You are gonna to wanna to look into Founders, and oh dear God, if you're anywhere near Newark, New Jersey, you have to see this for yourself to believe it. If I hadn't been there, I don't know that I would have really understood how much this is the future of the way entrepreneurs are gonna learn. It is ultra hands-on. He attracts some of the most amazing people that have been through there, like in this little room, but there's so much energy and juice, and he is so, Giving, like understand for a second, this is crazy. People work, they fight, they build businesses, they do all of that for the exit. That's literally what most entrepreneurs think about. All they care about is the exit. Once you get the exit, it's the exit. That's when you leave, you retire, you go somewhere nice where there's no mosquitoes, to quote my boy Jay-Z. Like that is what people are trying to do. And so to be there on the precipice in Miami Beach where he would have saved millions of dollars just by moving to Miami Beach, signing on that condo in the sky and never worrying about all the people that come after him and just go do it again when he's ready, take his time. That could have been his life, but it wasn't. He looked inward and he found a totally different answer, something that compelled him, that why, that thing that drove him to really do something. And if you wanna know when I look at him, do I see somebody who will do whatever the fuck it takes? Yes. I do. And he didn't go into some of the amazing ideas, and I don't know if he just doesn't want to go into them, so I won't rat him out, but he has some really cool ideas. And I'll just say this, he built an art gallery in the middle of the ghetto, I just got the chills, with some really amazing art done by local artists. It is phenomenal. These are people that never would have had a chance if it wasn't for this man. It is one of the most incredible ideas it's what I call mining for astronauts. Right now, the next great mind, the next great thinker, the next person to do something great, truly 
to become an astronaut is in the inner city somewhere and they don't believe in themselves because nobody has ever believed in them. But to be able to give entrepreneurs a platform, a way to give back, to connect, to find their why, and to do something amazing while building business opportunities along the way, I think is one of the most important and greatest entrepreneurial endeavors anyone is undertaking right now. And I believe you're the man to do it. So guys, check him out, Gerard Adams. You won't be sorry, I promise. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. Gerard, thank you, buddy. Thank you.